The Impact Lounge is the number one place to be for the real Impact Wrestling fans. Well, the inevitable has happened. Tessa Blanchard is the new and current Knockouts champion after defeating Ali and the previous champion, Sue Young, in a triple threat match at the Redefined show. Stick around to the end of this video. I'm going to tell you who I think will ultimately take the title off Tessa. But I'm also going to tell you who I think her Bound for Glory opponent will be. This one may be a bit of a shocker to you. As fans, we love to be the bookers, right? We love to be the creative team. Most that I talked to felt Sue Young should have had a fairly lengthy run, but that Tessa should win her first title at a more special uh, occasion like a live show or pay-per-view. I've said dozens of times on the channel that if I were fantasy booking, I'd have Tessa enter as the TNA legend killer, beat the knockouts of the past one by one, ultimately forcing Gail Kim out of retirement and doing the passing of the torch. I felt that would have been a good way to keep her strong out of the title picture of a bit for a bit, but that's just me fantasy booking, of course. However, since arriving at the, on the scene at Redemption, Tessa has had her eyes on the Knockouts Championship, and she is now the champion. Aside from the Madison Rain stuff, Tessa has basically been unbeatable. So I think it's safe to say that we could have the longest Knockouts title run in a while, maybe even in history. Tessa, for my money, and I'm being gender specific, is the best female competitor in the world. I've always thought that. Frankly... I thought the chances of her ever signing with Impact were very slim, but I think she saw the opportunity that she had in front of her to be the face of a division, as well as the person who takes it back to the knockouts of old. So what will her, effects on the, or her effect on the knockouts division be? Especially as the champion. I mean exactly what I said. I think she's the one to take it back to the knockouts of old. I think the company wants it to get there, and I think Gail Kim wants it to get there. I'd be willing to bet with all this women's evolution stuff floating around that Gail is taking it upon herself and her agent's role to once again make the knockouts division the top female division in the world. I think she's going to take that on as a personal challenge. If they could somehow get, you know, a Rachel Ellering or a Santana Guerra, I think those would be the next big dominoes to make that happen. I'm not sure how realistic that is, though. I think it's time to get some of these females from Lucha Underground over as well. The women will have no choice but to step their game up versus Tessa Blanchard. And that's a shoot. The opportunity is now there to see some of the best women's wrestling in ages on Impact. Something we've been really wanting. Only she and a few others in this world know why the WWE machine didn't want to bring her aboard. My personal opinion has always been that she's too similar gimmick wise. And a much better wrestler mind you. To Charlotte Flair. Perhaps Tessa is that diamond, though, that offers some of the best unsigned women around the world a chance to come and get some national exposure and get it in the ring with the champ. Maybe she's that new recruiting piece. If people say, damn, if Tessa Blanchard signed with Impact, maybe that really is the place to be as a female competitor. The title hasn't met much in a while, let's be honest. Rosemary had a really nice run with it, in my opinion. Allie had won it once before she was an in-ring competitor and then lost it to Maria Kanellis, who can't really wrestle. There were a couple Gail Kim title runs, a couple Sienna title runs. Jade was once the champion and it was super forgettable. There were weeks at a time where she wasn't even on television. Then Laurel Van Ness had won the title at one point, but asked for her release at the same set of tapings, really devaluing what that belt meant. Allie was next to win it, and I thought she had a pretty decent run, and I really liked Sue Young as champion a lot. But now, it's Tessa. And to be the champion now, you have to beat one of the best women's wrestlers in the world. It's a whole new exciting chapter for the division, and as good as she is on a microphone, we could see some really enjoyable television. It's hard to justify keeping Tessa off TV, and now we're going to see plenty of her. So hopefully this has a positive effect on the ratings moving forward. Now, Tessa was rumored to have signed a two-year deal with Impact Wrestling, and I think it'll be extremely difficult, if I'm being realistic, to keep her after that two years. But if they can sell her on being the face of a division, the standard bear, the next Gail Kim, essentially, as well as compensate her financially, then maybe she will decide that Impact Wrestling is her home. She's still young, so maybe she does, you know, maybe she does say, yeah, I'm willing to work my way up through the NXT rank, start from the bottom, and you know, whatever I have to do for a couple years. Because legacy is really important to Tessa from what she says, what I've heard her say. 
So common sense says she's going to want to work her way up to the very, very top of the women's wrestling scene. But for now, let's enjoy her. Let's hope she changes the directions of the knockouts division. Let's hope that she is here for years and years to come. All right, so who do I think will take the title off Tessa? Uh, Madison Rain. I'm just kidding. No, I think the narrative and the storyline is, um, or the story here, I, I should say, is that Allie can't beat Tessa. I don't think Rosemary versus Sue Young, when that happens, I don't think that needs the title. I previously thought it would be nice for Rosemary to come back and take it off her. I don't think she needs a, that needs a title. I, and I think Allie still has unfinished business with Sue Young. So I, I think they're going to be separated for a little bit. I'm not sure who's going to work programs with Tessa going forward, but and especially for Bound for Glory. But my guess, I actually think Taya Valkyrie returns to television as a babyface and has an extended program with her. I think she's a prime candidate to take the title off her, but I don't think she will. I think she's very smart considering that the tapings are going to be in Mexico. I think it makes a lot of sense to put her in that role as a over babyface and get that he more heat on Tessa. The problem is when running through a small division, you're left without opponents very quickly. We, we see this with LAX. So you have to get creative when it comes to who's that opponent going to be, who's going to be that next opponent. So I say it's Tessa versus Taya at Bound for Glory. And if I had to go with my gut, I think Allie will ultimately take the title offer and then transition into a program with Rosemary. But I think they need to keep Tessa and Allie separated for a little bit because Allie is who they're going for forward with as the baby face face of the division. But I think there's a lot of people who like Tessa better. And um, I think the crowd could ultimately turn against Allie if they, if they push that too far. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up. And for more from the Impact Lounge, check out the videos below.